Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the August meeting of the Economic Club of Traverse City. My name is Jeff Guy. I'm a member of the Economic Club board. Our club president, Kathleen Guy, is out of town today, so she's asked me to uh, manage the meeting in her absence. Uh, we'd like to apologize to anyone who is expecting to see Chris McGinnis from Crystal Mountain speak today. Uh, Chris could not make it, um, but we hope to have her back some other time. We are very excited to bring you two very excellent speakers today from TC New Tech. We have Jennifer Zunko and Kelly Ignis. But before I get to the speakers, I have a couple short announcements to make. First of all, our annual dinner is going to be held Saturday, September 18th. We will have a guest speaker, Josh Rogan. Josh is a columnist for the Washington Post, and he covers foreign policy and national security. His newest book, Chaos Under Heaven, covers the relationship between the United States and China. His presentation to the Economic Club will focus on the economic relationship between the two countries, global trade, and the origins of the coronavirus and its impact on the global economy. Josh will be presenting in person at the Park Place Hotel. We will also stream the event on Zoom for those who cannot attend. Okay, so now we would like to, uh, I'd like to have a couple people come up here. Um, we have Paris Morse from Northwestern Michigan College, and she's their director of development. And also uh, board member Kathy Dixon, if you guys could come up here, we have a special check presentation. Good afternoon. Um, I'm representing the board today in doing our annual contribution towards NMC scholarships. Um, but before I have Paris um, receive the check from us, I just wanted to share with you why um, both the NMC contribution that we make uh, annually and the essay contest that we do every year is so important to us. So it is part of our bylaws. Uh, it's in our little membership book, uh, page five. So it kind of gives um, at least um, a sense of why, uh, why we've done this historically and why it's important that we continue to support the scholarship program uh, on an ongoing basis. So from our uh, bylaws, our goal is to sponsor scholarships, awards, and grants administered by public and private tax-exempt academic institutions to encourage the study of important local, state, national, and international governmental, business, economic, and social issues. So, our goal is to help develop future leaders, and each of these programs, in our mind and, and according to our bylaws, really allows us the opportunity to accomplish that. So, today, on behalf of the board and the club, I'd like to present Paris Morris, who's the executive director at NMC on the foundation, uh, a $2,000 check for their scholarship program. There you go. Let's see, does this work? It does? Wow, great, okay. So I just wanna say thank you all so much. Uh, these scholarships make a tremendous difference for the students, not just in being able to afford college and being able to go, but also it shows that you believe in them and that the path that they are choosing to pursue higher education is, is valid, is appropriate, and that means the world to them. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy and Paris. Okay, the second thing. Um, 
we have an essay contest, as Kathy mentioned. So each year, the Economic Club holds an essay contest to inspire area students to apply themselves and become engaged in discussions of economic issues relevant to our area. The contest is open to high school juniors and seniors in the five county Grand Traverse region. Uh, board member Ron Jolly is here to make some comments and announce the winners. Thank you, Jeff. Well, let's see. We will announce the winners and ha uh, we'll let you know what the question is, but I want to thank, first of all, the readers because we get all these essays and this year we had well over 60 essays and about a dozen readers. So each essay is split into groups or, uh, and everybody reads the essay several times. It's time consuming for the readers. So we really appreciate uh, Kathleen Guy is not here, our president. Mike uh, Mulke here is a member of the board. Is Mike here? Mike is not here. Mary Tonneberger, another member of the board, is one of our readers. Andy Dolan, I saw him right there, Andy. Uh, Major Dick Grout is uh, one of our readers and has been for many years. Big supporter of the Economic Club. Uh, Evelyn Richardson, Tony Lentick, Chet Janik, Jim Rowlett, another uh, longtime supporter and reader. Isaiah Smith, Kevin Scarnulis, Terry Hedrick is over here. And um, sadly to say, one of our uh, volunteer readers for many years now helped us through round one and two and passed away before round three. So I want to express my sympathy and appreciation to uh, Tom Semmerfeld and family. And the question this year that the uh, students had to address should the government at any level spend taxpayer dollars for early childhood, birth to kindergarten uh, programs? Discuss the costs and benefits to society of such programs as Head Start, early child development, home visitation, nutrition, counseling, etc. So that was the one they had to tackle. And we have three winners this year. Now, it was the most competitive contest ever judging by the number of rounds that the essays went through and the close, list, uh, close uh, uh, scores. Normally in the first round, you'll see a few essay uh, writers emerge ahead of the pack. It was all over this year. It was just so close. So we went through several rounds. And our first place winner who could not be with us today is from Mancelona High School. The second year in a row that the winner is from Mancelona High School uh, working through Career Tech Center. Callie Crouch is her name. Uh, Callie is actually headed to Grand Valley State University today, so was not able to be with us. She will be majoring in English. And her teacher saw the contest and encouraged her to enter, and she won. <laughs> so uh, we uh, uh, will be sending an $1,800 check to uh, Callie. Second place, uh, Willa Kramer from Frankfurt High School. Willa is headed into her senior year at Frankfurt High School. And um, I believe when she goes to college, she wants to go into teaching, I believe she said. Uh, she said her teacher saw the question and had all the students in the classroom do an outline. They didn't have to write an essay, but they had to do an outline. And the teacher saw hers, encouraged her, and she took it a step further wrote and entered and won second place, Willa Kramer receives a check for $1,200. And our third place winner is here with us today. I want to thank Jack Kern. Stand up, Jack. And uh, is that your, who, who's with you today, Jack? Uh, Chrissy Kernan and Patrick Kernan. Congratulations. So, uh, Jack, let me ask, uh, you're uh, finished with your senior year of high school. Where are you headed now? I'm going to the University of Michigan. I actually leave tomorrow, so this was good timing. Uh, yeah. 
And, and uh, usually after someone says University of Michigan with our large crowds here, we have some loud outburst, but uh, maybe the Wolverines couldn't make it today. I don't know. <laughs> All right. What will you study there, Jack? Um, I'm going to be an engineering major. Engineering major. Terrific. What made you enter this contest? So... Um, my economics teacher actually enters this contest every year with all the students and encourages all of us to join. So um, it was just required. And I was like, I, I felt really passionate about the prompt. And I decided to enter. And that was from what school? Uh, so I, my high school is Central High School. But I, through the Career Tech Center, um, I took economics. And so my teacher at the Career Tech Center encouraged all the students to join. Well, congratulations to you, Jack Kernan, parents. And we have. You get your check today. A thousand dollars there for Jack to uh, spend in Ann Arbor. All right, and again, uh, none of this would happen without Gina Thornberry, who is the secretary of our economic club. Uh, I'm the chair, but Gina just, she does all the work. <laughs> all right, so thank you, Gina. Thanks, Ron, and thank you to all the students who uh, submitted essays this year. So now I'm going to introduce today's speakers. Um, our first speaker, Jennifer Zunko, has served as the executive director of TC New Tech since January of 2020. She has a passion for entrepreneurs and has worked in a number of industries, including hotel, cruise, wine, magazine, and book publishing. As a connector of people, she is constantly flipping through her mental Rolodex, looking for ways to bring people together. When she is not hosting TC New Tech pitch events, you can find her enjoying the outdoors and dreaming up new ideas. So our, sp our second speaker, Kelly Ignis, has worked independently for the last eight years as a graphic designer and web developer, helping to advance companies near and far through her company Workshop 6-7. Did I say that right? Okay. Kelly is also the co-owner of a hospitality brand, freshtrippin.com, which provides cleaning, maintenance, and concierge services focused on, but not limited to, the short-term rental market. During her time serving as president of the board of directors for TC New Tech, Kelly has been instrumental in systematically stewarding the organization's mission in a number of ways, including the website build out, community outreach, strategic planning, and automation of internal processes. So one quick comment before they come up. If anyone is watching on Zoom, if you have any questions throughout the discussion, please submit them. And Jennifer and Kelly have graciously agreed to write written responses to your questions over the next week or two. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Jennifer and Kelly from TC New Tech. Well, thank you for having us. Um, we're going to tag team on this presentation. So. Um, we hope that you will come away from today's presentation with a solid understanding of what TC New Tech is, where we are going, and how we fit into Traverse City's growing startup ecosystem, and how we're contributing to the health of our region's economy as well. We will also share how you can join us in helping to make a difference. So um, as Jeff mentioned, I'm Jennifer Zunko, this is Kelly Ignis, and on behalf of the entire TC New Tech community, we're very grateful for your time today. So first I want to ask, um, do we have any entrepreneurs in the room? Anybody? And um, I'm wondering how many have ever invested in an entrepreneur or a startup? So the question that we are striving to answer is, how do we cultivate a tech startup ecosystem that will create year-round high-paying jobs and build commerce in our area? And simply, we know we have to start with a single idea 
then bring together the people and the resources to bring that idea to life. All right. Before we share with you our vision for making TC New Tech the tech hub of the Midwest, let us tell you about TC New Tech's journey. This started in 2015 by longtime TC resident Russell Schindler. Russell is a geologist by trade, but also a sailing enthusiast and a se serial entrepreneur. He started a Naughty Cat, as well as Compliance Inc., American Re Remediation, and H2 invest H2O Investigation here in Traverse City. In 2015, Russ was building his company, SampleServe, and wanted local software developers to help him build his environmental sampling app. He knew the talent was out there, but mostly working quietly from home, sometimes from their basements in dark corners. <laughs> uh, and Russ needed a way to draw them out. Um, as, and, and so that was part of the impetus for TC New Tech. As SampleServe began to grow, Russ needed to connect with com a community of investors. He had been attending a group, a meetup group in Ann Arbor called Ann Arbor New Tech and realized creating a similar group in Traverse City could facilitate an ecosystem of like-minded people to eventually lead the area to become that tech hub of the Midwest. In May of 2015, a 501c3 nonprofit status was approved with, and TC New Tech was officially launched. The very first event pulled in 40 plus attendees. So not bad for a first event, and uh, especially just of an interest group. So TC New Tech is a community of tech enthusiasts, investors, entrepreneurs, and Michigan policymakers. We're building a culture of innovation, economic growth, and opportunity for local talent in our region. Over the past six plus years, we have hosted hundreds of startups at our monthly pitch events, where we have three to five brave entrepreneurs get up on stage and we give them five minutes to pitch their idea to our audience. That's followed by five minutes of questions from the audience. After each pitch, um, the floor is, uh, or rather after, after all of the pitches are completed, the floor is open to the audience to vote for the best idea via a text messaging, messaging app that was created by one of our board members. There is no charge to pitch at our events, and there is no charge to <coughs> attend. Uh, I, I know some of you here have mentioned that you have attended our events, and we appreciate that. Membership in TC New Tech is only $20 for the year, and it keeps those interested in the local tech scene engaged. So TC New Tech, we exist to energize a community of entrepreneurs by showcasing tech and facilitating connections. Can we had our slides reversed. Our mission is to expedite the launch of startups in northern Michigan. We envision a thriving ecosystem of entrepreneurs and tech startups yielding high paying jobs and high value commerce. We create and support opportunities that grow tech focused businesses. Included in that, we foster opportunities for funding and financial connection for startups. We empower individuals and companies by providing a positive environment to take risks and to present ideas and concepts. We value integrity and transparency in supporting the community of entrepreneurs who pitch at our events. We seek to establish a culture that energizes creativity and innovation. We value youth and experience along with inclusion and diversity. We embrace the entrepreneurial struggle and the willingness to pivot and persevere when needed. We value networking as an important tool in fostering opportunity and aiding in growth for individuals, startups, and as a community. We're available to provide advice regarding idea formation and refinement, direction, and we relate experiences on what we do and what, and what, what to do and what not to do. We help with access to resources needed.
So there's our, uh, once again, that's our agenda. So you have an idea of how the evening flows. And we do keep things moving right along. Somehow when these came through, they were all, they all became rearranged. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yes, there we are. Okay. We're back on track. In a perfect world, we're looking for ideas in early stage startups that are Michigan-based or they have uh, some Michigan presence. Maybe the founder is based here, or maybe uh, one of the team members is based here, uh, or companies that are open to relocating in northern Michigan, and we have uh, talked to quite a few of those type of startups. Preference to pitch is always given to companies that are based in northern Michigan, and further preference to those that are based in Grand Traverse County. Preferably, the companies that have a high growth, should have a high growth, scalable potential using technology to bring a product to market. However, they could also be a maker type business. For example, a restaurant would not qualify, but a startup that had a digital platform would. Usually the companies that we have pitching are at early stage or seed stage and are smallish companies with two to 10 team members However, we don't have any restrictions on size. The company should have at least a prototype of their product unless they are pitching uh, at one of our bar napkin pitch idea pitch events, which is uh, just we run through real quick one minute ideas uh, that people can find someone to connect and help them move that forward. They could also be seeking their first round of investments or they could be getting to already beginning to receive revenue from customers. The TC New Tech event generally happens on the first Tuesday of every month at the City Opera House in front of an audience with as many as 300 in attendance. And through the pandemic, we also had about 100 people viewing online. Our audience consists of programmers, IT staff, people looking for opportunities for their tech companies, tech companies looking for staff, um, investors, startup founders looking for investors, and tech geeks that are just want to learn about new ideas. Our format is similar to the show Shark Tank, with one exception. Our audience gets to vote on which startup will receive the $500 cash prize that's provided by one of our sponsors. We always allow time in our schedule for relevant 30 second public announcements while our audience is texting in their votes. We operate um, with a lean but dedicated board of directors that support the work of two part-time staffers. Uh, we started out with a very small board and increased in size and are back down to a smaller, leaner board, but they're uh, working board members generally and a great team. Okay. So uh, TC New Tech quickly grew from 2015 to 2019, and at the end of 2019, it was uh, obvious that there was need for a part-time executive director to take the wheel and guide the ship. So that's when I was hired. Uh, it was early 2020 when I was hired. Uh, February was really my, my first event that I worked with someone, um, in-person event. And then March was my, of 2020 was the first event where I actually um, you know, put on the event myself. We had a great turnout. And then a couple days later, we went into a pandemic and I had put on 18 virtual pitch events after that. So we had three weeks to figure out how to pivot from in-person events to online events. And through that, we ramped up our virtual communications with our audience. And now that we're back to in-person events, 
We're refocusing on connecting with our network, creating more value for our members, our entrepreneurs, and our investors. In 2021, we're focusing on streamlining our operations. We're revamping our static uh, committee structure into a more dynamic working scrum, to coin a phrase from technology. In an event, in an effort to grow our organization and uh, increase attendance, we're reaching out to groups like the Economic Club of TC in the greater five county area. In 2021, we're working to cultivate innovation by encouraging entrepreneurs to share their ideas or early stage startups with, um, to share their information with our audience. Through initiatives like our Bar Napkin Idea Pitch, we do a Pitch Perfect review, um, and we are going to be co-sponsoring the Northern Michigan Startup Weekend in May of 2022. They say that uh, every entrepreneur has an idea that they have hung on to for an average of five years before they've actually gotten it out into the atmosphere. We're working on a plan to increase and diversify the monetization of our events and our website to launch more startups and energize our community of tech startups and facilitate more connections. There are a number of dynamic teams operating in the Northern Michigan entrepreneurial ecosystem all working toward the same goal, to create more year-round high-paying jobs. Rather than work in a silo, we value collaboration and coordination with the various organizations, and we meet regularly to identify ways we can support one another's goals. Since our launch in 2015, we have given a platform to entrepreneurs that have shared over 300 ideas with our audience. During the pandemic, we expanded our geographic reach by live streaming our events on social media. We have built up a digital presence of over 1,800 email subscribers, over 1,700 Facebook followers, over 150 YouTube subscribers, 420 LinkedIn followers, and 934 followers on Instagram. You all can uh, go on your social media and start following us and make those numbers go up. Our pitches have been viewed over 11,000 times on YouTube. Prior to the pandemic, we were averaging 200 attendees at our events at the City Opera House. We're playing a little catch up now, but we're optimistic that we will surpass those numbers by the end of this year if, if things continue as they are. We also um, have been influential in the development of the uh, startup incubator known as 20 Fathoms that came out of ideas that started at TC New Tech. Uh, we've created a local culture of innovation and we provided a platform for the Michigan Tech Grand Traverse Area Alliance uh, to bring more um, Michigan Tech student projects to Traverse City and develop a partnership there. Lots of success stories, and these are just a few. So Russell Schindler pitched at Ann Arbor New Tech, as we mentioned, to meet programmers, then investors, which led him to launch TC New Tech. SampleServe connected with Casey Cowell, who became an early investor. Justin Blanchard, the first CTO, other programmers that helped build out their app. Today they're scaling their company, negotiating large global contracts, now valued at $7.2 million. In June of 2015, Derek Smith pitched his idea for Navigo. Navigo is a TC-based data management and data analytics software application. They raised over $500,000 from local investors. In February 20 of 21, Navigo was acquired by Onalytics, I hope I say that right, a data platform company based in South Bend, Indiana. All 13 Navigo employees were offered the chance to continue their work with the company 
even hiring more people in Traverse City. Ben Fellows originally pitched his idea for Loop Software in July of 2019. Loop helps to develop quality assured services for companies. During the recent lockdown year, Loop Software was still able, able to prosper. Since pitching at TC New Tech, they've moved from a spare bedroom, which is where a lot of entrepreneurs start, to an office on Woodmere Avenue with 16 employees, and they're recruiting in order to expand. In February of 2017, Garrett and Dakota Porter pitched their idea for Afterglow, an LED lighting system for the action sports industry. And they were able to secure their first round of funding with private with a private investor in the Traverse City area. Garrett, now 23, and Dakota, 26, have recently designed their second generation of products and are looking for their second round of funding. Their product will be getting global exposure during a reality TV show called The Ultimate Surfer on ABC next week. And then this last one is one of my favorite um, success stories. In 2018, Austin Grosser and Daniel Fuller pitched an idea for an edible raw cookie dough. <laughs> they grew from making batches in Austin's mom's kitchen to supplying over 3,000 stores in 40 states with the Big Dipper Dough product, plus scaling a private label division into a multi-million dollar company. Austin attributes the mentoring he received from Josh, Josh Kent, then a TC New Tech board member, and Lowell Grumman, a TC New Tech member and managing partner with Boomerang Catapult, as instrumental in his rise to success to success after he pitched at TC New Tech. And I gotta tell you, some of these pitches are just fun. You know, uh, an event night is always very inspirational and often fun, and it's just, it's really fascinating to see where people start, where they're taking it, you know, what their different paths to development are, what their different um, funding pathways are, but it's so inspirational, I can't say enough about attending the events, they're really fun. Yeah, I can echo that um, sentiment, too. I was a longtime attender of TC New Tech and pitched a couple bar napkin ideas myself before coming on board uh, with the organization. So as a nonprofit, we rely on the support from sponsors, members, and volunteers. We have many ways you can get involved. You can attend our monthly events. You can become a member for just $20. You can volunteer, you can become a, mem a mentor to these uh, young uh, entrepreneurs and startups. You can share the news about our mission and uh, help to introduce us to other innovators and uh, investors so that we can make those connections. Uh, you can become a sponsor. You can become an in-kind sponsor, maybe a service that you offer that we could use. You can make a donation on our, right on our website or invest in one of the startups that pitch at our events. That's very important to us. Yeah, a couple things of note. One, I can't remember what the theme of the event was, but we had an event one night that was mainly all students. And um, so there were uh, middle school students, high school students, college students all pitching. And, um, and I believe it was a girl that had this really great idea that was um, had a lot of potential to get off the ground quickly. And, um, and we, right there in the event, and this is kind of an unusual way for things to happen, said, said uh, anybody out there, you know, wants, what's your ask? And she said, like, $138 to pay for some subscription. And, I, and somebody raised their hand and said, fund it. And somebody else said, I'll give you $2,000. And it was just this really cool night. It was like, it just you know, made everything feel so amazing and worth it. Um, so, oh wait, got to drop the glasses back down. <laughs> Although our events typically fall on the first Tuesday of the month, due to the Labor Day holiday, our next event is September 14th. Uh, do us a favor, pull out your phones right now, save the date, and make a plan to attend the next meeting or the next event. We promise you won't be disappointed. Uh, I always tell people that TC New Tech is the highest value networking in Traverse City. And, uh, you know, nothing against the TC Economic Club. <laughs> it's also high value networking. But, um, and another point I wanted to make out of something Jen just said is um, 
uh, we've talked about young entrepreneurs, but it's not just young entrepreneurs. I mean, there's entrepreneurs from just literally every age strata. And uh, Russell was always fond of saying that, um, uh, or citing a statistic that most um, successful startup entrepreneurs that really take it off and scale are usually in their 40s and 50s. They're, they're a more middle-aged entrepreneur. And so it's definitely not unusual, any, anybody at any stage. Um, uh, also, uh, if you scan that QR code, pull out your phone, open your camera, scan that code, um, that'll take you right to signing up to be a member at TC New Tech. And uh, beyond that, visit our website at tcnewtech.org. Um, RSVP or register for our next event at the City Opera House. Again, it's free to attend. You're just uh, an RSVP gets you a printed name tag. So <laughs> thank you very much. And I'm going to hand it back to Jen to wrap up. Do you take questions at this point in the presentation? So yeah. Oh, we have a question. Jim, roll that. That's a great idea, Jim. Uh, now, Jim's asking about nonprofits, if we um, do anything to support nonprofits. And we do. We, um, we always have these uh, public announcements that are welcome. But also, if we have time in our program, we do schedule in um, information about what's going on with certain nonprofits. But we also encourage any nonprofits to go onto our website and apply to pitch. If you have a novel idea that maybe needs tech help or needs some funding, uh, and someone in our audience might be able to help. I wanted to expand on that and say, um, you know, we've talked about one type of pitch, which is like, you know, here's my idea or here's my company. Um, you know, how do I connect with resources or just get the word out there? But we've also had pitches where somebody, Paul Britton did one of these one time, and he said, I've had this great idea for a while. I don't have time to pursue it. Here's the idea. Anybody out there want to, you know, make it happen? And so, you know, that can be a pitch too. Um, we've also, uh, we, we also have um, what we call educational pitches. They're not really in line for the pitch prize, but you know, if somebody is um, excited about or is an expert in a new channel of uh, innovation or technology, they can go up there and talk about it. And, um, or maybe they're um, an expert in a certain, um, like Mike Naughton used to talk about internet security. And Josh Kent used to get up there and talk about, um, you know, different marketing applications. So, um, you know, th there's a lot there other than just kind of the Shark Tank style information. So, questions? this. How do you decide the winners? Is it everybody there that votes or is it just members or? Right. It's an audience based vote and we have a text messaging application. So for each pitch presenter, um, there's a code on the screen and you just text um, that code to a certain number and it live tallies in a bar chart on the screen. So. Um, mention investors. Is there thresholds? How, how do you become an investor? So uh, we have, there's two different things, Katie. There are, we have sponsors, uh, and we have different levels of sponsorship for our events, and that can be anywhere from $250 a month to um, uh, $700 or $1,200 a month. We have a lot of different categories. But when we talk about investors, we're also talking about those people sitting in the audience looking for opportunities to invest in. That doesn't benefit TC New Tech in any way, but it's kind of our goal, is we want to make those connections. And those can be any level, like Kelly was talking about, um, yeah, some young entrepreneur that only needed $128 to launch, and so someone could invest in that way. We had somebody else that pitched um, Hedgehog Health, which is a um, health platform for autism, people with autism. And they had a um, 
GoFund, or not GoFundMe, they had a Kickstarter campaign where you could invest as little as $25. So we have all different levels. So, so TC New Tech as an organization, we don't have like any particular structure or platform where we manage any of the investment for the startups. We just facilitate basically the networking and the conversation. And so in our audience, you might find you know, that person that could uh, say, I'll pay that $128. Or we have the Northern Michigan Angels members there. We have private investors. We have venture capitalists occasionally. And so there's just you know, a different types of investors that are part of the community that um, gain exposure to the pitch presenters and so on. And, and we encourage anybody that's pitching to make their ask clear at the end of their pitch. So their ask might be financial, but it might not be. Their next ask might be, I'm, we're shopping for a CTO that can take us to the next level or something of that nature. So, More questions? I think I asked. I think I heard you ask as a 501c3. Are we involved in investing in any of the startups? Right. No, we haven't been involved in investing in our pitch presenters at all at this point. We have talked about um, maybe integrating, um, what is it, WeFunder? WeFunder, which is a really popular, really amazing um, uh, investing platform being utilized um, by large scale startup companies. How do you raise your funding? Right, I'll let Jen take that. So the question was how do raise our funding how do how do we survive and we survive by um, memberships $20 a year memberships but we really survive by um, sponsorships uh, every month we have a pitch prize and we have spo different sponsors every month that sign up for that we have um, a uh, venue sponsor. We have a big main sponsor. For the last couple of years, it's been Michigan Broadband. And um, we have a lot of supporting sponsors that we uh, can give great exposure to them uh, at our event and throughout the month because of our uh, large, very targeted audience. But we also take donations on our website. So there's a that that's how we are we're totally funded by sponsors. I think that's it. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jennifer and Kelly, so much. Um, as a token of our appreciation, the Economic Club has a small gift for you. And we really appreciate under such uh, short notice too, with uh, you know just getting in touch with you guys last week. So thank you very much. So one last comment, um, we're really looking forward to uh, seeing everybody at the annual dinner on Saturday, September 18th. Uh, again, Josh Rogan uh, is going to be the speaker. Um, if you haven't followed him, check out, uh, he said some really good stuff in the Washington Post lately, especially with what's happening in uh, Afghanistan. But his, his talk to us is going to focus on um, our economic relationship with China. So again, his book, Chaos Under Heaven, you can get it at Horizon Books. And um, if you'd like to purchase a copy and read it prior to September 18th, that would be, uh, I'm sure he would appreciate that. 
And uh, he's offered to, of course, sign books on the 18th. So uh, thanks again for everybody for attending here and on Zoom. And thank you for your support of the Economic Club.